the next question brother mohsin bashir from kashmir india what should we follow when there is difference of opinion among the scholars on a particular issue this question is related to the earlier question that what should we do and who should we follow if there is difference of opinion among the scholars allah says in the quran in surah nisa chapter number 4 verse number 59 atullah wa atir rusul obey allah and obey the messenger and those who have been endowed with knowledge those who have been giving the commands that means talking about the scholars obey allah and obey the messengers and obey those who are knowledgeable those who are the scholars ulil amra but the verse doesn't end there the verse continues but if they differ go back to allah and his rasul that means you have to follow quran and follow sahih hadith and the scholars but if the scholars differ go back to allah and his rasul all the scholars say you should pray five times there is no need of going anywhere pray five times all the scholars say they should fast during the month of ramadan no problem all the scholars say you should give 2.5% zakat in most of the cases okay follow that when there is difference of opinion and if scholars differ the quran says go back to allah and his rasul now when the scholars differ what should a person do for this i would like to give an example depending upon which level do you belong to your decision will be based on that i remember when i was in school when i was in the primary school for us for a child in the primary school teacher is always right irrespective whether the teacher is knowledgeable or not for the child going in primary school for him or her the teacher is the most knowledgeable in the world and i remember in the primary school when my science teacher told something and i told my father mai lag raha hu janna my father he was a medical doctor he was a psychiatrist he had done his post graduation medicine and when there was a medical issue and i told my father my father said that you know this is wrong i was a damn no my teacher cannot be wrong that time i was a kid i was 7 8 years old not knowing that my father is a medical doctor but for me the teacher is always right similarly when a child is in primary school for him the teacher is always right so for a person who has no knowledge of deen or maybe is a beginner in deen who is a revert or maybe who has not studied at all he may be an elderly person but did not study deen at all so i would consider him to be in the level of school level so for him he should catch one scholar consider him to be teacher and follow that is the safest whichever scholar he believes but that is for a person who has limited or no knowledge of deen normally the fuqahas they divide the muslim the two levels one is the mujtahid a scholar and one is the non mujtahid i divide normally into four levels the different levels of division i would count a person who has bare minimal knowledge of deen bare minimal or maybe a revert or maybe he is elderly but no one taught him really about the deen so i would call him a person who is in school bare minimal the lowest level in the muslim the highest level i would call as a scholar or a mujtahid and today in today's world there are very few mujtahid very few scholars maybe a few hundred very few all the dais that you see giving talks and all very few are really scholars very few the highest level is scholar the lowest level is just the beginner the second level from top i would say is a student of knowledge so most of the duats are student of knowledge for example the person who has studied deen and spent years studying the usul of fiqh or the hadith or tafsir you can call him a student of knowledge student of knowledge may differ he may be a graduate from islamic university he may be a post graduate done his masters he may be a phd just by getting a phd degree don't become a scholar can become but chances are less scholar is a different category altogether allah has given him the sense of analysis of understanding he knows all the usuls and has the element of hujja etc that's a different level so scholars are very few in the world maybe a few hundred now in the full world so these are students of knowledge in the students of knowledge there are various categories low level medium high very high 
PhD may be a very high level, but yet a student of knowledge. And a person may not have gone to university, but a man has spent months and years discussing with the top scholars and Fukahas. He may be more knowledgeable than a PhD. And in my organization in Islam Research Foundation, when I was in Bombay and the school itself, we had more than 500 employees, out of which about maybe 25 of them were graduates, postgraduates, and PhDs from foreign universities. Mainly from, mostly from Islamic University of Medina, some from Imam Muhammad bin Saud University, some from another university, maybe 25 of them, bachelors, postgraduates, and PhDs. Then we had another 30, 40 people who have passed from the Islamic universities in India. Some have done the IFTA, some have done the Alim course, some are Mufti, another 30. So totally we have about, you know, 50, 60 people. All of them I call a student of knowledge. There were some who were in the research department who did not pass from any of the Islamic universities. But they spent years in doing research. For me, they were more valuable than the masters and the PhDs amongst my staff. They were very knowledgeable. They could argue. They could quote the hadith. They didn't go to any Islamic university. But the level of understanding of deen was much higher. So the salary was higher even than the PhDs who have done the doctorate from the Islamic University of Al-Azhar, etc. Even from Medina. And none of my staff I would call, call not even I'm not a scholar at all, I'm just a student of knowledge. So student of knowledge differs at different level. That is the second category. The third category above the basic beginner is those who have knowledge of the deen but may not have studied to a great extent. But because today it's easy to acquire knowledge either by internet or by social media, they have interacted but not to the level of a student of knowledge. So I would call them in four levels. One is a scholar, a mushtai, very few in the world, few hundred. Then you have the student of knowledge, the student of knowledge are various categories, lower level, medium level, higher level. Then you have the people who have knowledge of the deen but may not be called student of knowledge but they know quite fair. And one is a lower level, just the beginner. If you are a beginner, you are like in the school, Catch one scholar, follow him, that's the best, you don't have that. If you are a student of knowledge, if you are a student of knowledge, and if the scholars differ, they have to analyze, go back to Allah and Rasul, go back to the evidence given by these scholars. So if two scholars differ, the student of knowledge will actually check that what is the evidence given by scholar A and what is the evidence given by scholar B. He himself may not be a scholar, but he has the basic knowledge of at least analyzing the evidence. And no dai unless he is a scholar should give a fatwa. I never give a fatwa of my own. What a dai can do, he can read the fatwas of the scholars and then he can agree with one scholar more than the other scholar saying I agree with this scholar more because the evidence he is giving is much more reliable than the other. I feel this evidence. Now depending upon what level of student of knowledge are you, can you agree? But naturally, for a very low level of student of knowledge, then it may not be right for you to judge which of the scholars is correct. But if you are on a high level, you can. Those who are on the third level, who have knowledge of the deen, what they should do? They should ask a student of knowledge that these two scholars are differing. Who do you think is more appropriate? And based on the evidence they give. So basically, you have to go back to Allah and His Rasul see the evidence in the Quran and the Hadith, there may be chances that some scholars, they have made mistake out of ignorance. They were unerfed. Some said because of difference of opinion, various things. So if you analyze and then make a decision, so if you are a student of knowledge, you can analyze the evidence given by the scholar, then decide which scholar is correct. If you are the third category, you can ask a student of knowledge, or ask a scholar, a third scholar, which of the two evidence is more appropriate and hear their reasoning and based on that you can decide. If you are the fourth level, just knowing, hardly knowing the level of deen, you catch one scholar, follow him blindly, there is no other option. But naturally, he should not be a fake scholar. He should be a scholar by its true sense. And if you do that, you have no other option because your knowledge is very low 
in the deen. These are the options we have, but as the Quran says, go back to Allah and the Rasul. We have run out of time. That was the last question that I could answer. Just to give information, inshallah, that there will be a program next Saturday, but it will be only ask Farik. Till then, we meet, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa akhirul da'wan alhamdulillahi wa